Hi guys and welcome to another episode of Iggy's Bodybuilding Camp and in today's video I wanted to discuss the hot topic right now in the fitness and YouTube scene which is the natural versus fake natty bodybuilders and the main focus of my debate will be Simeon Panda and Ulysses Jr. Unfortunately these two guys are under the spotlight at the moment and I thought I would put my opinions and my views out there but before I proceed I am in the hotel room at the moment because I've got some meetings to attend and I'm in central London staying at the Hilton Hotel and it's a normal hotel except for two unusual things. There is a apple just waiting to be used and it's a really nice one as well. And when I came into the hotel they handed me this cookie. A chocolate chip cookie is really really delicious. I wasn't going to eat it but when I turned it around lo and behold the macros are available hallelujah so i weighed the cookie uh, with my obsessive weighing and i managed to fit it into my macros for the day anyway i digress let's get to the topic at hand i have done some research i've made a few notes and i'm going to refer to my notes when i'm talking about this just to make sure that i'm giving you the most accurate uh, information that i can so how do you determine whether Simeon Panda, Ulysses Jr. or whoever are fake or not? It's by applying something called the FFMI, the Fat Free Muscle Index, where they take your height, your weight and your body fat percentage and work out how much muscle mass you are holding. And they then put that on a scale and determine whether you're natural or not. Now in 1995, some scientists took 156 men 50% uh, of whom were self-confessed uh, steroid users, 50% were natural and of the natural group many were dedicated bodybuilders, several had competed in uh, natural bodybuilding contests and won, two held world records in strength events and many others were recognized by their associates as highly successful weightlifters. Significance of this is that the individuals who were in the natural group were those who had approached the maximum limits of muscularity that could be naturally attained without drugs. Now, the researchers concluded based on this study that the upper limit of fat-free muscle index in non-steroid users was roughly 25 and that was pretty much it. For the, the steroid using group, however, amongst the biggest guys, there were those that even hit uh, an FFMI of 32. Uh, to support this claim, they did a, a study of the Mr. America winners, so the uh, absolute elite, uh, between the years of 1939 and 1959. So this is kind of where there probably were still some steroids, but much, much less than they are now and, and not used as much, and they were probably not as effective. And what they found is that even then, the, the winners had an average of around about 25 for the FFMI. Final point, the scale, this FFMI only applies to very lean individuals. So 10% body fat or less, the higher your body fat, the more skewed and um, unreliable this scale becomes. There it is very possible for somebody with a very high body fat percentage to also have a very, very high FFMI, well above the 25. Um, just because obviously with more fat the body can store a lot more mass but once you lose that fat you also lose a lot of the mass so according to this scale the average FFMI so this is based on individuals who train hard who have a very low body fat and who live the, the gym life can achieve between 20 and 22 it's attainable for sure 22 to 24 range you have to be gifted and 24 to 26 you'd have to be a genetic freak anything above 26 is undoubtedly according to this study you're on steroids i took my figures and i put them in just just to see based on a body fat machine that i use at my gym my gym paid about 20 grand for it they reckon it's 98 percent accurate and to be honest since i've been using it it has been very consistent so i plugged my numbers in at the moment it says i'm at 12 percent body fat so based on that, I have an FFMI of 22. Four months ago, I finished my cut and the machine said I was at 9.8% body fat. 
and when I put my numbers in from then when I was at my absolute leanest I had a FFMI of 21.4 so that is based on me having trained for five years uh, a lot of experience living the life eating right addressing the subject of Simeon Panda and Ulysses Jr let's look at some well-known bodybuilders Arnold Schwarzenegger Phil Heath Ronnie Coleman between them these guys have won a crazy amount of Mr Olympias their FFMIs average in at around about 29. Simeon Panda and Ulysses Jr based on the statistics that I took of them from Simply Shredded where they did interviews and their stats are there they come in at about 28 unfortunately and I have been very generous with their body fat percentage I've been very reserved I've calculated their body fat as 7% but looking at the pictures of them it could potentially be lower than that you know if you look at Ulysses Jr who came first at the Muscle Mania, which is supposed to be um, a natural bodybuilding competition, he is undeniably on some form of anabolic steroids. And I only say this because of this picture, where it's very evident that he's suffering from gynecomastia, which is kind of enlargement of the breast tissue. And obviously it's not fat because he's super lean. And this kind of thing can pretty much only happen where you've used and abused steroids and you know your estrogen levels in your body have gone really really high creating gynecomastia and i think this picture has been very damning has absolutely destroyed his reputation you know he has claimed to be a natural bodybuilder a lot of people follow and respected him and this picture blows everything he's ever said out of the water and proves that he has taken steroids so that's the end of that debate simian panda on the other hand, you know, he's taken some lie detector tests, which he paid for. He took a steroid test to prove that he's natural. A lot of people don't believe him still. If his stats are correct, so his height, his weight, and his body fat percentage, if those are accurate, then he cannot be natural. However, if he is an absolute genetic freak and those stats are incorrect, i.e. his body fat is a bit higher and his weight isn't as much as it's said to be there is that slim very slim chance that he may be natural but i highly doubt it i've tried to be as fair as objective and as reasonable as i can be looking at the facts and the evidence in front of me i can only conclude that they are i mean ulysses without a doubt and simian panda unfortunately that they are both not natural as they claim i just want to end this video by saying this one of my mottos is be the best version of yourself that you can be and a lot of people have become extremely upset and angry at these guys for effectively lying about being natural and my view is if they are lying if, if, if that is the case and you believe it to be the case then just stop following them stop supporting them you don't have to give them the the level of abuse that they've been receiving i mean some of the abuse has been like borderline psychotic you know people wishing death upon them and things like, i mean that is unnecessary for me i've been training for five years i plan to train for another 25 years and my my view is i want to achieve the absolute best physique that i can achieve naturally all i can do is continue to try hard don't look at these guys and feel disheartened and feel as though they've lied and their physique isn't achievable so therefore you shouldn't even try or bother go out there and, and be the best version of yourself that you can be train hard and train for yourself to 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 improve yourself the bodybuilder that i look up to the absolute most is dorian yates i mean the guy's highly intelligent and he's a well-known steroid user but it doesn't mean that the principles the knowledge the experience that he has and that he teaches and that he shares are not valuable to you you can still use those those nuggets of knowledge and improve yourself be more efficient in your training and achieve your goals quicker and faster and, and that's what it's about you know go out there use the knowledge that they have and, and be the best version that you can be anyway guys that's it from me just wanted to continue to to thank everybody who supported my channel i hit 100 subscribers recently so that's a big deal to me it might be a drop in the ocean for a lot of um, youtubers out there but it means a lot 
so thank you for your continued support Please continue to comment like share and subscribe hit the red subscribe button keep following the channel be the best version of yourself that you can be live the life i will see you next time